Toyota brings a whole new level of luxury to the full-size truck segment with this, the 2022 Tundra Capstone. We're here in Monterey, California to check out all the features and to let you know if this is a truck worth buying. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. Toyota's 2022 Tundra is a big step for the car maker. With it, Toyota not only introduced a new chassis, it also brought out an all new hybrid powertrain, a brand new home built infotainment system, and a fresh design language inside and out. We already tested the new TRD Pro Tundra in Texas just a few months ago. Just today, we finally have pricing on the new TRD Pro and all the other iForce Max hybrid trims. The TRD Pro starts at $66,805 US dollars before destination and delivery. Today we're focusing on an all new trim. This is the pinnacle of Tundras. It's called the Capstone, and it starts at $73,530 US dollars. You could say that this is the Lexus of full-size trucks, and it's priced accordingly. I should also point out that the equivalent Ford F-150 Limited with the hybrid 4x4 powertrain is priced at $82,000 even, making this Toyota a relative bargain. But only if the Toyota delivers on the luxury that it's promising. Under the hood is the new iForce Max hybrid powertrain. This is a parallel hybrid system that combines a twin turbocharged V6 with an electric motor generator that's sandwiched between the engine and 10-speed transmission. The gas side requires 87 octane fuel. The electric side uses a 288 volt nickel metal hydride battery and by itself produces 48 horsepower and 214 pound feet of torque. Altogether, the system produces an impressive 437 horsepower and 583 pound feet of torque. EPA rates economy at 19 in the city and 22 on the highway. The Tundra Capstone comes standard with an on-demand four-wheel drive system. Around town, you'll be in two-wheel drive. When the going gets slippery on gravel or snow, you can switch into four high or four low with a dual range transfer case. In the back is an automatic limited slip differential. Straight off the dealer lot, the Capstone is ready to tow with a limit of 11,170 pounds. Capstone trims are easily recognizable due to the unique grille with integrated fog lights, chrome accents, retractable running boards, two-tone interior with high-end leather, and the Capstone logo on the side. Like other Tundras, in the back you'll find an aluminum reinforced composite bed with a 1,485 pound payload capacity. The power footstep is a nice touch. Though you can get regular Tundras in a variety of bed and cab configurations, the Capstone is only available with a five and a half foot bed and a Crewmax cabin. Step on up. Okay. Man, I love this panorama sunroof. It's so bright in here, even with the dark headliner. Here we have obviously a two-tone leather scheme and oh man, this, this feels really nice. Down below we have both seat heaters and coolers, as well as AC power and two USB sockets. Uh, one's a USB-C, the other one's a USB-A. Vents and cup holders. Right here we have even more cup holders. Yeah, this is nice. Got a screen here. Okay. Now this is a pre-production vehicle. That means that some of the little bits, like this little handle right here, aren't exactly finished materials. But everything that is finished here just feels amazing. I got tons of leg room, enough headroom, although not a ton actually. And uh, yeah, this is nice. Now let's see what it looks like up front. Wow. Just looking at this interior, you can tell it is a step above the standard Tundra. We got everything from a digital rear view mirror to this gorgeous two-tone leather treatment to the open pour walnut, which is spread throughout the cabin. It really is a luxurious place to be. We knew we were gonna have multiple premium grades. We have platinum, we have 1794, and we have capstone. We really wanted something that would be a bit more exotic and a bit more 
rich and premium experience. And we like that contrast of light and dark. We think it gives us a lot of opportunity on the interior to do something really beautiful, using authentic materials in a highly crafted manner. Capstone uses a authentic open pour American walnut and it really looks beautiful. It's up high on the instrument panel. It has a really strong stable sort of beam architecture, something that you would expect to see in a durable rugged truck, but it looks very sophisticated and very premium at the same time. One of the key terms we use when first thinking about the next Tundra was sophistication. And we know that's an expectation from our Toyota customers for a full-size truck. We also knew we were gonna rely on more premium grades. And creating a sophisticated, fundamental exterior shape and interior um, was our goal. And we actually started the project by thinking of the premium grades first. And then we developed sort of a trickle-down effect into the mainstream grades. The big obvious thing, we have a huge 14 inch navigation system with infotainment. It is pretty spectacular and it seems really bigger than it needs to be. I feel like everything is just huge on it. It doesn't actually give me more real estate, it's just filling up space. But the nice thing is that they don't rely on that for everything. You still have physical buttons and switches for aircon, which is dual zone, of course. I have a big power volume knob here. I have a USB easily accessible there. And then I have more switches down here that handle everything from towing to trail cam, traction control, and then also buttons to handle the airlift suspension for load leveling in the back. Because this does not have the off-road group, you just have two high, four high, and four low. Now you will note that there is no automatic four-wheel drive setting, which I think is a miss for this vehicle. Toyota says that it's A, not what their customers are asking for, and B, there's advantages to towing to have a two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive manual switching system, which I, I'm not really sure why that would be because even the Ford F-150, you can still put it in two-wheel drive mode if you're towing. So not really sure why they didn't offer that option. Maybe it's just something they don't have yet. The gauge cluster here is digital and it has some nice colors and designs. I actually really like it. On the left, we have all sorts of little displays, but that's pretty much the traditional Toyota lineup on the left here. Everything from economy to settings. This is also where you set all of the advanced safety stuff. And this does have a lot of them from lane trace, pre-collision system, blind spot monitoring, parking sonars, rear cross traffic alerts. For the collision system, it actually will detect pedestrians. It'll also detect oncoming traffic incidents. Uh, so it is an advanced system. Now I have driven the Tundra before and I actually rather liked it. It wasn't as fast as I thought it would be, but in terms of comfort, in terms of ride, visibility, for a full-size truck, I actually find it very easy to maneuver. And so I think it's really great that they have this offering for a truck that's so easy to drive, but now with more luxurious appointments. Price as this one sits is over $73,000. And that might terrify you as a regular normal human, uh, but keep in mind, if you take a Ford F-150 Limited and you add the hybrid powertrain, with four-wheel drive, you're gonna spend 82 grand for their top trim. So this or the Ford, I think it depends on exactly what features you want because of course the Ford F-150 does have different features available to it. Like it has its cool full down armrest where you have a full flat work surface. This one doesn't have that. This one's just really more of a fundamentally straightforward truck. And I think that's kind of nice. For sound, this has an enhanced JBL system. It's on the bassy side. The trebles aren't exactly ideal, so I don't really think it's a luxury listening experience, uh, but it is better than the bass trims. So if you're looking for a Tundra, you want a Toyota, you don't want to get an F-150 or a Chevy or any of those kind of things, uh, I think it's really great that Toyota has finally offered a trim level that is a cut above the normal trim. Now, is this for you? Well, depends on what you're looking for. You know, if, if you're the boss, this is a boss truck. If you're a, a middle management, maybe you want to wait a little bit before you really put the shekels forward on something this expensive. But I think in terms of experience and feel and comfort, yeah, it's just a, it's a nice place to hang out. We've now looked at the interior. Let's see how this thing drives. Okay, let's punch it. Whoa. 
Okay, yeah, it's a hybrid, but it does not sound like your traditional hybrid. This thing has a snarl to it, courtesy of the twin turbo V6. And oh, it makes you want to make noise. That's pretty cool. As you would expect, the seating position, even in its lowest setting, is still pretty high. Although, actually, this is, this is getting to a good spot right there. I would like more adjustments on this seat for the price of this thing. Uh, only getting forward, back, up, and down. It just, it seems like it's lacking. Like, where's my pedal adjustments? Where's my under thigh adjustment, you know? It's kind of lacking in the luxury appointments just a little bit. Let's see that? Okay, that's a nice spot right there. At first, when I saw photographs of this, I wasn't sure that the two-tone treatment was really going to do it for me, but I think in person it actually comes together very nicely. The black, the white, because it's not actually white, it's actually kind of more of a, a cream, which ties in very nicely with that open pore walnut. Just overall, it is just a great place to hang out. I do believe that those little black ornaments on the hood are a bit much. It's like there's little horns on the front of the vehicle. I can't believe how much light this panorama sunroof lets in. It's almost like open air motoring, but quiet. And speaking of quiet, acoustic glass all the way around, which makes this the quietest Tundra you can get. All you hear is, <laughs> oh, I, I would never get tired of that. Okay, I don't really see myself as a big truck guy, but I kind of like this big truck. I don't think I would get the capstone though, honestly. You know, I just don't think that it's it's a tier above and it's all the little things. Like uh, the 14 inch, you can get this on any other Tundra. Uh, the seat positions, there's not more of them and I, I kind of think that comfort is key. There's no massage units. I do have heating and cooling. Uh, but for this dollar figure, I kind of expected to get more luxury features, not just nicer versions of the things already in the Tundra. This comes with Toyota Safety Sense 2, which includes lots of great features, including adaptive cruise control, which we'll go ahead and turn on. All I have to do is set radar, see, with lane centering, uh, set my distance, and there it will now track behind this priceless Gullwing Mercedes that we're driving behind. If you're looking for semi-autonomous features, this isn't the truck to get. Toyota doesn't really do that. They are a very, very conservative company, and they will only roll it out after they know that it works in all situations, which is a long ways away, a very long ways away. So one of the biggest differences with this vehicle is just the wheels. This comes with factory standard 22 inch wheels, which are massive, massive. Personally, I don't see the point of getting a truck with wheels with that little sidewall. It just seems very impractical to me. Uh, still, I know there's some people that want that bold look. They wanna roll up with a truck where people go, wow, what is that? And it actually makes the ride a little bit harsher because you have less sidewall, less air cushioning your ride. So if you're looking at this and you're like, hey, you know what? The capstone Tundra is for me, but I really wish it was available in a large SUV. Well, your request is answered because we already know that there's gonna be a capstone version of the all new Sequoia as well. And the Sequoia is based on this same platform. It is basically a Tundra truck with a fully enclosed body. And I think that's pretty exciting. Actually, I, I might consider one of those for myself. When I first drove the new Tundra, I focused on the TRD Pro. And it also had this 14 inch display. And there's a lot good to be said about this. Cause I can say like, hey, Toyota, turn my temperature to 70 degrees. This feature is not available. Oh, chip shortage. They can't have that feature because they are lacking chips to do it. Fun fact. Okay, but I can say, hey, Toyota, what's the temperature outside? The current temperature at Carmel Valley Village, California is 62 degrees Fahrenheit and feels like 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, good to know. It's 66 and it feels like 66. I can also use natural speech to uh, set navigation points, do all sorts of different things. One thing that I think is amiss with this system is the fact that there's no home screen. Your home screen is navigation. 
uh, when I would like to see what my current music is, maybe my phone status. It's such a massive screen. To not use the space better, I think is just kind of an oversight on Toyota's part. Okay, let's see how this thing handles. I feel kind of like, you know, I'm driving the Nimitz here. Oh. oh yeah, oh yeah. So even though this is a very large truck, it actually handles pretty nicely. Go into the corner, punch it. Whoa. Big sound. One thing that is missing from this truck, in my opinion, is an automatic four-wheel drive mode. Instead, you have two high, four high, and four low. And of course, when you go into four high or four low, it's going to give you a locked 50-50 power split. So you can only use that really on slippery surfaces. On pavement, like we have here, you're going to be in two-wheel drive all the time. So it doesn't really help if you just want a little bit of extra traction in difficult situations. For the size and power of this truck, economy is actually pretty good. You're looking at 22 miles to the gallon on the freeway, 21 combined, which is nice, actually. For something this big, that's better than my old 4Runner. <laughs> By old, I mean 2021, but you know what I mean. So if you're looking for just what is an essential truck, a truck of trucks, nothing terribly fancy, nothing terribly posh, this truck really does deliver for people looking for that experience. It's not gonna have all of the options that you're gonna get with a Ford F-150 Limited, uh, but what it does offer is nicely executed. Body roll is nicely controlled. Yeah, this is fun. We do have extra drive modes. Let's see Sport S Plus. Cool. So this modifies the powertrain to be way, way quicker to bring on power. Yeah, it's, it's quick. Wah, okay, a little quick for this road. Let's, oh, okay, let's uh, turn it down to comfort and see how that changes things. That should smooth everything down. And oh yeah, we're definitely a lot more, a lot softer in the corners, which is frankly more comfortable on a road like this. Let's switch to Sport S, and I'm just gonna floor it up here. God, this thing just takes up the entire road. You know, the Capstone is an interesting product. It's big, it's burly. It just doesn't add enough, I think, in terms of features to really make it a truly compelling trim in the Tundra lineup. I think that other versions of the Tundra perhaps offer more value, but this is not a type of product that I would buy. I mean, I'm definitely much more of the TRD off-road or TRD pro type of customer. That's where I would spend my money. But this one, I could see it being of interest to some people. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share videos. We make them for you and we hope you enjoy them. Oh. <laughs>